Hi everybody, I'm Jen with JNT Creations and Allegory Gallery here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Thanks for tuning in with us today. I have another fun project for us. If you like what we've been doing for you, please hit that subscribe button, like, share this video, and post what you've created on our Facebook page, Allegory Gallery Design Challenges. Thank you so much. Let's get started. We are going to make this absolutely darling little Southwest faux turquoise bracelet today. It shouldn't take too long. It's a really simple project, but I will warn you, the beads are tiny. These are 11-0 Mayuki Delicas. And we then have one millimeter tiny little silver um they're little silver round beads. They are sterling, um, but they are itty bitty. And then we also have these uh, Hills Tribe silver. They're they're called stick beads, um, and they are one point eight by point eight millimeter. So yeah, itty bitties. I apologize, but it just wouldn't look the same if it was with large. I like little bracelets. I have little wrists. I don't need big bracelets. Alrighty, so let's go over our list of ingredients. We have two bright silver um, crimp covers. We have two wire protectors. I have a lobster claw here that is 12 millimeters. <laughs> millimeters. <laughs> Uh, two bright silver 20 gauge six millimeter jump rings. I have 32 of these one millimeter silver beads. We have 28 of the 11 0 Mayuki Delicas in bright red. I have 36 of the 11 0 Mayuki Delicas in turquoise. There is a one and a quarter inch ball pin. I've got 12 three by two millimeter silver spacer beads. These are those stick beads I was telling you about. And once again, they are 1.8 by 0.8 millimeter. And there are six of them. I have two copper crimp tubes. I've got three African turquoise three millimeter beads and one six millimeter check glass flower. And here is um, two inches of chain in case you want to put an extender on it. This will make a seven inch bracelet. So if you need it a little bit longer, then I would plan out how many more of the patterns you need to make on either end. So you can either extend it out with beads or use an extender. If you wanted to turn it into an anklet, just use you know some really nice matching chain, a little bit thicker chain because um, the ankles will take a, a little bit of a beading. Uh, we also need medium flex wire. Um, this is soft flex. I'm using the sterling silver just because I have it. Um, you can also use fine. You, we're using the wire protectors, so that should be enough to protect it. But just be aware that fine wire is not going to be as strong as the medium. And I sleep in my bracelets, so that's why I generally like to use the medium. Um, the fine will give you a nicer flex on it though, but this one is pretty flexible. A couple of pairs of chain nose pliers. You want a flush cutter. You want a crimp tool. And then a round nose plier or the bail makers. Um, I, I always use the multi-tier bail makers. Let's clear our workspace here. We're gonna be using about eight inches, but I don't cut off of my spool until I've already loaded all of my beads on. 
This helps prevent waste and also you only need to pay attention to one side of the, the wire so that your beads won't fall off of it. Okay, so I'm just going to leave my bracelet here for the pattern and work out of my tray. This is a beadsmith bracelet board. It's really awesome because you have all of these nice little holes and you've got space here to lay stuff out and then measure how long you want it. So the very first bead we're gonna put on is gonna be one of our copper crimp tubes. And I'm gonna put on one of these itty bitty one millimeter silver beads. And now two of the 11 O's in red. Another one millimeter. And two of the 11s. Look at that, we're messing up already. <laughs> Got a little ahead. Okay, so we've got our copper, we've got our one millimeter silver, two of the red delicas, one millimeter, did I mention they're tiny? And now a three by two millimeter. A one millimeter. And two more red delicas. Another one millimeter. And now eight of the turquoise delicates. It's the other good thing about the bead board. If you drop any, chances are it's going to catch it. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. One millimeter. And now we're gonna repeat the Delica red pattern. So that's two reds, one no, a three by two, And a one. And then two reds. And a 
another one mil. <laughs> Stubborn little guys. Work in a well-lit space and wear your spectacles if you need them. Okay. Now, another eight of the turquoise Delica. And another one mil. One more red pattern. Two red delicas. A one mil. Three by two mil. One mil. And two more reds. Followed by a one mil. Now we're going to put on another three by two. Another one mil. Wait, yes? No. A three millimeter African turquoise. Then the three by two. And the one mil. Yep. Now we're going to change the pattern just a little bit. We're going to do two red delicas. And a one mil. Two turquoise delicas. A one mil. And now three of the Hills Tribe stick beads. I don't know why they're called stick beads because to me they look like just flat little um, spacers, kind of rectangular, but itty bitty. And when they stack together, you can see there's a slight curve in them. So they really look kind of lay like stone chips. Just adds the cute little chip look to it. They're itty bitty, but I think they're so worth it. I love them. And then a one mil. And 
a 3.2. 3 by 2, yeah. And now your check glass flower. That is a six mil. Okay, and now we just repeat the other side. 'll free to change your colors up you might lose that southwestern look to it but if you don't like red and blue you don't like red and blue if you don't find the hills tribe stick beads you can always use more of the one mil Silver spacers, you can use something bigger if you wanted. You can use a silver tube bead. You can use more of the three by twos. Entirely up to you. And I used a darker um, African turquoise. I used ones this time that had a little bit more black in it. So that kind of changed the look a little bit. All right, let's put another one mil on. And the other three stick beads. Another one mil. Uh -oh. Two turquoise delicas. A one mil. Maybe. Let's get rid of that ruler. We really don't need it. And two reds. And one mil. Three by two. Three millimeter round. Three by two. And one mil. They have a mind of their own. Two red delicas. Three by two, one mil, two red delicas, One mil and eight 
turquoise. One mil. Two red. One mil. Three by two. One mil. Two red. One mil. The last eight of your turquoise. Hmm. Either I miscounted or one flew the coop. Last of the turquoise delicas in one mil, last repetition of the red delicas. So two, one mil, three by two. One mil and two red delicates. Last one millimeter. And last copper crimp tube. There we go. Let's give her a double check. Oh, look at those. That's where two of them went hiding. Looks good to me. And let's put on one of our jump rings onto the lobster claw. Always open your jump rings from side to side by twisting them just slightly. Never open it like a Pac-Man mouth because not only Will you bend that out of round, but you will also weaken the material. And when you close it, you're going to twist it gently back and kind of apply pressure towards the other side because you are trying to fill in that gap. 
because a tiny little bit of material gets removed when that saw goes through. And you can kind of hear it click when it hits the other side. That's how you know it's completely closed. Let's take one of our wire protectors and feed that onto. Our wire. Let's feed that lobster claw on. And go ahead and squeeze that wire protector closed a little bit. And now we're going to feed the open end through that copper crimp tube. And when you crimp, it is really important to keep your two wires separated. They cannot crisscross inside that crimp tube because if they do, well, you might get a solid crimp to start off with. <laughs> As you wear it, it's going to wear and tear inside and can break. So you want to make sure that when you crimp down on that tube, it's coming between those two wires and they want to stay parallel. It's a lot easier to keep them parallel when you use a wire protector like this, a wire guard, because it kind of helps to keep them uh, your sides straight in there. So step one was to go in one of the holes that has a tooth. And this one is a three step, well, a three um, hole because this last one is for larger um, crimp tubes. I did the middle one because I have a small crimp tube and smaller wire. So that was step one. Now I'm gonna turn it a half a turn and go into that first step on my plier you can see that it's sideways now because when I squeeze it this time it's going to create a taco so that's super tight it's not going to go anywhere unless you cut it with a pair of scissors go ahead and trim off that excess tail And now we're going to put one of our wire crimp cover or our crimp covers on because I do not like to see my crimp tubes. I don't. Some people might not even notice them, but I do. Especially when I'm working with silver. Now the secret to closing a crimp cover in a round is to go slow. They don't like to move quickly. And you notice I'm rotating which side I attack it from. Don't go fast. And rotate your tool. And you will have a round crimp cover. And I used my chain nose pliers to close that up with. Okay, slide her all down. And you really only need about an inch and a half. You don't want to waste it, especially because this is the Sterling Soft Flex Wire. Okay, feed that other wire protector on. You down your jump ring. Make sure it's closed all the way. And then feed that short end through your copper crimp tube.
Sorry for the delay. Something sounded like it was trying to get in. <laughs> All right, so I'm pinching the end of that wire guard again. And I just pulled that short end a little bit tighter. But I want to make sure that my tension is not going to be too tight on the bracelet. Keeping in mind that I still have another crimp cover to add on there. So I'm just going to back that off just a little. And once again, making sure my wires are not crisscrossed. Okay. Step one, I'm going into that middle hole. And giving it a little squeeze. Mission successful. You can see that I have two parallel wires. If they crisscrossed in that tube, you would see a bump in there. You would not see two perfect parallel sides. Okay, turn that a half a turn. Go into that first hole right there on your tool. Make sure you don't come down on that silver bead. You're running out of room. A little squeeze. And there's our taco. All right, tough part is over. And snip your little end there. Put your crimp cover on. It says, but I don't want to go on. <laughs> right, so you want that completely covering that crimp tube. And not your little silver bead. And then with your chain nose, once again, go slow. Rotate. about as good as it's going to get. Alrighty. So now you can leave it as is. Or you can add your chain onto that jump ring. Or onto the wire guard. It depends on where you want it. Now let's make our little dangle. Put your last three millimeter bead on, make a 90 degree bend, and use your round nose to make a loop. Like so. it up a little bit and I like to slip it on the end with the lobster claw because it just makes it a little bit easier to put it on kind of stays out of the way a little bit more I'll grab across that whole loop and do a few coils down Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I always hold on to the very end of that wire. And when I get to one side or the other, I let go. Okay, clip off your little excess. And tuck that wire in. Yes, you do see a little bit of rust on my Xerons. The festival I was at had rain at some point every day. And my tools got a little wet. All right, so you see that? That's so cute, isn't it? So let's just double check. That is seven inches. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep mine at seven inches, so I'm not gonna put the chain on, but just imagine an extender with the chain. Thank you so much for watching again today. I hope you had fun. I know I did. If you like what we've done for you, please hit that subscribe button, like, share this video, hit the little bell so that you get a notification every time we post a new video. And please post what you've created on our Facebook group, Allegory Gallery Design Challenges. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.